everybody, it's Claire here from Sewing by Claire and today we're going to be making Otterline's um, culottes and Otterline's culottes are these ones shown just here which is in the book four I think it is, Luna Lapin and Friends, A Year of Making and it's these ones just here. Now they've got some quite nice interesting details on them these have because if I just go to the right page and show you the better picture of them, this one better picture just here. Then we've got a lovely pleat on the front here. We've got top stitching around the pockets and then we've got that lovely fold over flap with the button detail on there. And then there is a gap on the back as well for fixing a, a, a character's tail through should you wish. The other thing is that you have to lengthen the pattern if you want to make these for Luna because Luna's legs are longer and possibly Eric because Eric's legs are longer if you wanted to make him a version of these. Um, but in the video, I'm going to explain to you how to use the slash and spread method in order to add that length so that it doesn't matter whether you're making them for Otterline or for Luna, you're going to have all the information that you need to, to make these collards. Um, so yeah, I hope that you're going to enjoy sewing along with these for me, uh, for me, with me. Um, and I just want to say a really big thank Thank you to our sponsor for today's um, video and that is a lady well a person called pin and tonic um, and the person um, concerned sponsored me through my coffee account and sent me across some money for a coffee and I've used it to purchase the kit for this outfit and there's also the fisherman's top that goes with this as well so it's part of this three-piece sailing outfit and I have got the um, kit for the, the sailing anorak as well so that'll be coming too I just thought I'd start with the clots um, first of all um, so yeah thank you very much Pin and Tonic for your kindness and your generosity and your support I really do appreciate it thank you very much and just in case you want to have a quick look I've got offline peeping here um, in case you want to have a quick look and see the kind of finish that I achieve when I make um, the garments for the lunar lapping characters then these are the actual ones that we make in the video so I'm just popping on back after I'd finished so these are the um, the culottes that we're making with their lovely pleated detail they've got top stitching but in white around the pockets and we've got those lovely buttons and the fold back on the um, trousers there and a little hole for the tail to pop through as well um, which this one is pressed up I got pressed to fix that on so I just wanted to pop back and just show you how these look they do look a little bit wide on her hips just because of the way that that the hips are jointed and attached in with those buttons um, but they are they are all looking lovely and they are all got plenty of room in there with those lovely inverted pleats so I just wanted to pop back on and just show you um, what we're actually making and these are the actual ones in the video that I've made from the kit so I'll, I'll shush now let you get on with watching um, and I hope you enjoy stitching along with me today so the first thing you're going to do is need your Luna Lapin and Friends a year of making book and we're going to be making these um, collots just here on the Otterline is wearing here. So in order to do that, we need to find the instructions which are on pages. The story for Otterline, that's a fisherman's jacket. It's in here. So page 37 of the book, um, and then we've got the instructions for making her clots there. And then if we turn to the back of the book, they're almost like the very last thing, I think. Um, pages 132 and 133 in order to get the pattern. Now, there is a note at the, on the pattern here that says that if you want to make the collots for Luna, for example, the back and front panels will need to be lengthened. So if I just reach up and get my characters then we can just compare the legs of those just before we get started so we know why they're saying that. Okay, so here's stripped back a naked um, otter line and a naked Luna and if we lay those just side by side then we can see that Luna's legs are a good one to one and a half inches longer than otter lines let me just measure that for you so that we can see yeah one and a half inches longer so that's how much I would actually add into the pattern um, and I just use a simple slash and spread method um, and I'll talk to you about that when we're doing it but we'll just that's the that's the reason why because if I put them sideways on you can see that Luna's and Otter Lion's legs are a different length. Well, oh, that's not quite so, but it's an inch and a half difference anyway, just so that you know. So there are various ways that you can copy this out from your pattern. I just like to use um, tissue paper that I've got for, left over from my dressmaking product, projects because quite a few of these pieces will be big enough to fit some of the pieces on without you having to buy new. It's a great way to use up your scraps. And all I do is lay the um, piece of tissue paper over the top of my pattern piece whichever one I'm tracing 
and then I draw over the edges. Now I tend to do them a bit freehand to start off with whilst I'm resting on top of the book, but then I do go back and just neaten those edges off again with a ruler once we've got those um, traced out. But just try and be as neat as you can do because the first thing that's going to make a difference to our garments is how neatly we cut these out and how accurately we cut them out. So once I've traced off one, then I'll put Otterline's collots on there and I'll say, I'll put down what it is, it's the pocket bag and it says cut to. Okay, so therefore we've got th that piece there. I don't bother drawing on the um, stitching line because I'll refer to the instructions to do that. But if you just want to go ahead and do the same with all of your um, pattern pieces now, and as I say, after I've just drawn them out just roughly, then I just go over again and just match the relevant points and just neaten up those lines just to make them as straight as possible, ready for cutting out. So if you want to locate your book and your tracing paper, you can always use greaseproof paper as well, that's quite readily available, but not all um, pens or ink will stick to it, so just be aware of that. And then I just draw these lines in, and then I'll just probably just freehand that corner again just to make sure that it's as smooth as it can be. And then once we've got that, we're going to do that for all of the pieces. So we've got her pocket bag, the pocket facing, the front and the back. And I think that's all we've got. Um, I've had a quick look through um, and there doesn't appear to be anything else. So it's just one, two, three, just four pieces. That should make it nice and easy, shouldn't it? Okay, so here I am with my four pieces all traced off and just cut out. I have made sure that I've put all of my little notches on. So on some of the pieces, you'll see a little, little um, dash in the mutt like on the edge of the garment and that's called a notch and that's one of our clues when we're putting it all together so again there's two here on the back of the clots there's one just there at the bottom of the pocket and then there's one each on the pocket bag and the pocket bag lining as well our pocket facing sorry but the first thing that I want to do before we go do anything else is I actually want to ex um, just show you how to slash and spread um, because if you want to add this length in the in the future, then I'd suggest you do it now because then that's going to remind you if ever you come back to this pattern again that you actually need to do that. Now, the way that I do, do mine, is, it, and it is a very simple technique, is the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a spare piece of um, tissue paper that we've got. I'm going to do, draw two lines. They're going to have a little bit of overrun, so you want to have one plenty of room. So let's draw a line first. Let's hope I've left myself enough room. Then I'm going to measure down. I'm using my quilting ruler, but you can use an ordinary ruler should you wish. And just draw two lines, one and a half inches apart, but with a bit of overhang as well. Okay, just simply, just like that. So we've got a bit of overhang here, a bit of overhang there, and you'll see why that's important in a minute. Let's take this piece first, because this is the back, because it's got less marks on it that are going to confuse us. So this is an easier one to work with. Now, this solid line here is the slash and spread line. This line here is for the hem, the dotted line is. So on the solid line, what I want you to do first is just draw two little marks that span across that line. Can we see? So one just there and one just there. Just roughly, it doesn't have to be very big. It's just to dissect that line, just so that we've got a reference point because you'll see why that's important in a minute. And then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut across the shorten length of the line. So that's cut that piece into two. Put some light on, that might help. Okay, so that cuts that piece into two. Then what we're going to do, oh, and I've got my sticky tape. Hold on one second. Okay, I have my tape with me. If you've got cellar tape, that's great. But if you've also got something called magic tape, which is like a Scotch product, product I think, and it's kind of um, matte, that's really good because you can, you can draw on that, whereas on this you can't draw. So we need to be a bit economical with this one. Um, but that, that's okay, we can do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my first pattern piece and I'm going to line one side up with the upper edge of that cut extension line and put a little bit of cellar tape on, just holding it on. Just be as good as you can. It does, it will, if you use an ordinary cellar tape, it will gum up your um, pins when you're going through them, if you go through your fabric on them. So just don't, try not to use too much. 
Then the next thing I want you to do then is take your ruler and then you're going to draw a line that's straight down from the one of the little dashes that you've just done. If you've got your grain line, what I would do is line your ruler up with the grain line first and then move it across to your little dash and I want to draw that line in. I'll show you up close in a minute. So again, let me line up that with my grain line so that's about right. And then that's that dash, okay. So here we are. So there's my start at half of my little dash just there. I'm leave a piece of paper behind just to stop this from whiting out. Let me see if I can use that. Is that any better? Yes. Right, so these are the dashes that I started to draw on my pattern before. And when it was all together, there's the two dashes that dissect that length and shorten line. I've then cut along the length and shorten line and taken the bottom of the trousers off. I drew the one and a half inch spaced lines onto my piece of paper like here with a bit of overhang on either edge. And then now I've just taped my collotes back pattern onto the top line and then I've drawn down a straight line from each of those points that we marked before because now what we can do is we can take our bottom part of our collots and we can match that up on the piece of um, tissue that we're using. We mark that, line that up on the bottom line. Get my words right. And then I'm going to just tape it down. Tape it in the middle first just to hold it. That gives you a hand free then. Oh, that's a bit much tape. I'm split that in half. You don't want too much tape because, as I say, your pins get gummed up if you try and pin through tape. So you just need to hold it in place, really. And then what we do is we'll take the foiling ruler, probably. And we go from just above where we changed it and just down. So follow the line down. And then we just draw in, smooth in that line so that we've got it back again. And on the, in, on the other leg... We're just going to draw that up towards the, up to where the paper is, that will do. Okay. So this is what mine's looking like now. Oh, we need this behind it, don't we, so we can show you. So we've added in a one and a half inches just here because that's the difference between those two lines just there that we drew on our piece of paper. The overlap helps you attach it and have some substance behind it so that, that all stays together. And the lines that you drew just here mean that we can match it up at the bottom to make sure that we're diagonally underneath the pattern that we've not gone skew with somehow. So that's what I would do. And then what you, what you do then is you're then joining this point here up to this point here and this point here up to this point here. Now, just be, just be aware, I've taken mine slightly higher. You can see I started to go off slightly but just take it slightly higher so that you can actually um, have a nice run down that seam there because we don't want it to kind of be jig jiggy and um, uneven. So now all I do is cut on the new drawn line that we've got. And this is the same for if you're doing adding length to children's wear patterns or um, you know other patterns. It's, it's not rocket science, it's just the same thing. So if I'm making these for Luna, I'll do them... Um, Thing. So I'll put a little note on here, add length for Luna only. Okay, you might, if you were making them for, for an Eric, you might need to make them longer too, but for, for Luna. So then when I want to use the pattern for Otterline, I'm just going to fold this up, this extra up, so that it's in line with where it was originally. And then what I normally do is just put a pin through the middle, which is why I try not to use too much tape because it does gum up, gum up. And I just hold that in place. And then when, if I'm making the pattern for Luna, I can just take out my pin and extend it and I know exactly where I am. So that's what we try, that's what, what I would recommend that you do with both of your pattern pieces now. And then once you've got that taped in place, you can use a longer piece of tape to tape down your piece of paper at the back, just to give it a little bit of extra extra substance so I'm going to do that for the front as well so that that's on there and that'll remind me and obviously you've got these dashed lines already so you could use those as your reference points just to um, match those up if you wanted to um, but yeah let's just add those bits in now because that's going to remind you as I said I'm repeating myself okay I will come back to you when I've done the other piece and we'll be talking about grain lines as well 
Okay, so I'm going to go back to my kit and take out the linen fabric. I think it's linen anyway, it's, it's very lovely. It's a nice cotton fabric. Oops, nearly lost my pieces. And the first thing you're going to notice is it's going to be creased from being stored. So what the first thing we're going to do with this is we're going to take it to the iron and we're going to iron this flat to get all these creases out so that they don't distort it when our fabric whilst we're cutting out. So now I'll use my wool pressing mat for that, which comes in very handy. And I will just plug in my iron and we'll get on with ironing this. So I'm just ironing over my fabric just to get these creases out. And I am using steam on the fabric as well, which does help to get the creases out. You can also spray it with water should you wish, and that will also and then use a dry iron, and that will do exactly the same as a steam iron. This fabric is is a, a nice natural fibre, so it'll take the take the heat. So I've got it on my maximum temperature, so that I can get that nicely pressed, and I've got it on maximum steam as well. We just need to just get it flat just to get all of those creases out so that when we do go to use it, it will lie nice and flat. The other thing that steaming it will do as well is that if there's going to be any shrinkage in the fabric, then this will get it out for you before you start to make your garment up. Because if we were doing any dressmaking, we would pre-wash this fabric to get that shrinkage out before we actually started to cut into it. But because this is for our little characters, then we don't tend to just wash things that are as small as this. If you did want to, all I would do is either zigzag or overlock the edges, the cut edges. You don't have to overlock this edge, that's a selvage edge, but um, I would overlock or zigzag over those raw edges and then you can just pop it in the wash with one of your ordinary washers um, and dry it the same way you would do. Because if these characters are going to get played with a lot and, and they it very well might do, then that will make sure that there's not going to be any shrinkage in the future after you've gone to all the trouble of, of sewing the garment up. Perhaps that explains why my clothes often shrink in the wash, hey? Nothing to do with any chocolate cake or anything like that, or a couple of glasses of wine, hey? Right, okay, so once you're happy that you've got all of that sorted, then we're going to have a look at placing our pattern pieces onto our fabric and if you've only ever worked with felt before, then some of this is going to be new for you. So um, just be aware that it's just all a learning curve. And if you have to re rewind the video a couple of times so that you get everything, then please do so. Because it's, it's important skills that you're learning. So that's why it's all really good to know. Okay, my, I'm happy with my fabric. That looks flat enough to me now. I'm happy that's going to be okay. So let me just get rid of the iron and we'll get started. Just be aware that if you do um, iron on top of your pressing mat, you need to, you, with even with your wool press, on top of your cutting mat, you'll need to just be careful because you do get condensation coming through from the wool pressing mat onto your surface. So if you've got a table mat or something like that, you can always put that under. Um, mine's quite an old mat, but even still, I just wanted to point that out for you just in case. So if we go back to the book then, we will have a look here and we'll see that there's a cutting guide here and that will show. So fabric for the fabric in half with right sides together, it doesn't say which way round to pin it, but I would always pin towards the selvage edge. Now the selvage edge is this bound edge here. It's usually often got pinpricks in it or it's got a little bit of frame, but this extra bound edge just here. And normally when we are dressmaking, we will always lay our fabric out north to south in line with that selvage edge so that's really important bit to know if you haven't got a selvage edge then you can just go either north to south or east to west but don't go across diagonally on your fabric so you wouldn't place a pattern piece like that on your fabric when it's supposed to be like this happy for you to place it like that so across east to west but ideally you just do it north to south so the first thing we're going to do now is we're just going to fold this fabric across and we haven't got a straight edge on the end here. So what we're going to do is we are going to look at the edge that we're folding. And I can see that with these lines, you can, you can kind of identify one line in the grain of the fabric and make sure that it follows all the way down in order to make that straight. And then I'm just gonna run my fingers along it just to finger press it. And you'll see that the piece of fabric actually hasn't been cut straight here and here, look. 
and that's what we're trying to be aware of because if you try to match those edges up the cut edges then there's nothing to say that's going to be straight the other thing that you can do just to give you another tip is you can pull off one or two fibers along the edge here and give yourself a straight edge there and then you can measure from the straight edge of it so if you've got if you have one thread so let me just show you if you get one thread and you can follow it all the way up to the top without it being broken or cut so there's my long thread all dangly then you know you've got a straight edge there so now what we could do is we could go to the edge of the print edge just there keep saying just there don't I am pointing so to the to the edge of the selvage edge here where the color changes and then we look along here and we've got a rough fluffy edge on the where we've not got any piece of frayed edge where we've not got any of the threads and we could just measure to the edge of that that's fine and then we can just adjust this one at the top here to make sure that that's in line as well and that that measures up because getting the fabric is straight is really important so that's a couple of ways that you could do it. The, and, and the reason why we're, we're taking the time to do that is because felt doesn't have a nap. So it doesn't matter which way round you put anything or it doesn't have a grain. Um, you can put a, anything for felt, any direction, and it won't matter. But once you start working on the clothes, it's really important that you always run your pattern pieces in line with the selvage edge. So we now are sure that this piece of fabric is folded into and is straight. So that's all good. Have your pins handy because we're going to need those and what we're going to do now is we're going to roughly place these pieces onto the fabric to make sure that we can fit everything on especially important if you're using scraps at home and i think that's that's pretty much the same as the the, the layout in the pattern and, and i'm happy that we're getting the most we can this then leaves this fabric here for us to use for another project which is great so what we're going to do now is we are going to put one pin just along the centre of the grain line. So the grain line is this long pattern um, marking here that goes north to south and it's got an arrow on each side. Let me show you in the book because that will then help, I think, for you to see it better. Let's show on Tiggy's trousers look. So there's a grain line, this straight one here with the arrow on the top and the bottom. And you might think that just says keep your pattern piece straight, but we can actually use the grain line to great effect. Because if we take our ruler and we just make it longer, and be careful if you're drawing on top of your pattern pieces because you don't want your ink to go through. That should be long enough. And on this one, let's take that one longer as well. Then what we can do is we can use, let me use a tape measure because it's longer. And we go to the top of that grain line that we've just extended and we put our tape measure on and we measure to where the cha colour changes for the fabric. So in my case here, it's just over three and a quarter inches. And then I go down to the bottom and it's just over three and a quarter inches. So I know that pattern piece now is straight. So now I can take a, a pin, oops, if they'll go through, and pop a pattern piece, a, a pin top and bottom of that pattern piece. And I've just taken the pin out of the grain line now because that's done its duty. And we can now continue to pin this pattern piece onto the fabric with confidence, knowing that it is straight of grain and that it's not distorted. The reason why that's important is that if you cut out and your patterns are a little bit skew if, as a technical term, um, then what it means is that they won't ever sit straight. So if ever you've had a t-shirt and you've been doing, you're doing the ironing and you're trying to get this t-shirt to to lie flat on your ironing board with the side seams together and it keeps on twisting and one comes forward and one comes back that's exactly what's happened this the t-shirt hasn't been cut on the straight of grain and therefore it's always going to twist whenever you try and iron it and there's no way you can get that straight once it's been cut so there's our pattern piece onto that fabric so let's go on to our next one so we've got our other one let's bring it down here let's make sure we've, we've we're in line with the as using, saving as much fabric as we can. So the first thing you want to do is just put a little pin just right along, just taking just a tiny bite out of the fabric just on the grain line just here. And then let's go back to our tape measure. 
put the tape measure onto the grain line. It doesn't matter if you do it in inches or centimetres. I just think it's easier to read if it's in inches. And then let's measure back. So we're 8 and 1 16th from the, from the change of colour. And here we're 8 and 1 16th. But if you, were diff if you were slightly off, so say like I thought that was straight, so I'll just turn it slightly skew with. And I measured again, so that one's eight and eight and one, two, three, four, five, six, six, eight, six sixteenths. <laughs> and then down the bottom here, I can see that it's less than eight inches, it's seven and something, then I know that pattern piece is skewed. So all I do is straighten it until the two measurements from the grain line to where it changes um, on the selvage edge, changes colour on the selvage edge is straight. And then I know that my pattern piece is straight. And that's when then you can just put a, pattern, a pin in at the top and a pin in at the bottom. And that will then get it straight. And you might think it doesn't matter. It's only children's, um, you know, toy clothes. And, it, and you're right, it doesn't. But all of these skills that you're learning now, you can absolutely le le use those when you are dressmaking for yourself or for others. So in actual fact, I always will encourage you to try and incorporate these skills tips and tricks into all of your dressmaking whether it's for toys or whether it's for people because it becomes second nature and in the end you don't think about it and you don't realize you're doing it you just do it automatically and then you're fine um, and it just becomes part of what you do again on these pieces here we haven't really got a grain line so we're just going to pop pop those on as straight as we think we can get them we can't use the cut edges top and bottom because they're not level so you can't use those as a reference point. You can only really use your selvage edge. And even the cut edge of the fabric just here isn't, isn't cut straight, is it? So on the edge, so as we can see from that fraying. So go ahead, pop all your other um, pattern pieces on. You've got four in total. And then pin round them as I'm doing here. Just stay out to the outside edge so that it keeps it nice and straight for you. And then what we're going to do once we've done that is we're going to cut these out. So you can either use your scissors or you can use a rotary cutter. And you can just cut these out so that you can, as close to the lines as possible that you've, that you've drawn. And that you've got on your paper pattern. But try not to slice anything off your actual paper pattern itself. Otherwise, each time you use it, that garment will get smaller and smaller. Just marginally, but enough over time, if you especially make it several times, just to make... A bit of a, a problem for you. So there's my pattern pieces all onto my fabric. Get my scissors and I'm just going to now start and cut these out. And you'll notice that we have got the bit for Luna um, folded up because these are for Otterline, um, my clots are. If yours are for Luna, they'll be slightly longer, but there is enough fabric for you to be able to, to, be able to do that on the edge. So let's just cut through this, this is our objecting slider, probably need a sharpen. And you're just trying to keep as neat as you can do to those edges, but without taking off any of the pattern piece if you can. It is difficult not to do that, but just, just see what you can do. Okay, I'll come back to you when we've cut all of these out. Okay, so we've got all of our pattern pieces cut out here. One, two, three, four. They're all cut on the double, so we've got a left and a right for each one, so that's fine. No problem at all. And the other thing is that this fabric is pretty much self-reversible, so you don't you can choose a right, right side and a wrong side if you wanted to. And I'll show you how to mark that in case your fabric's very similar but has a definite right side and wrong side. And all I do is fold up my spare fabric and pop it back into my kit. And we'll use that if we need to, if anything goes wrong. Hopefully everything's going to be good. I also save some of my scraps, so I do sort out my scraps and if I've got anything with long thin edges on that I don't think I can use for anything I will get rid of those. But if there's any pieces that look like they could just be useful if it's only for checking the tension of our sewing machine, then that's what I'll just put those to one side just to save those um, for what we can use. So let me get tidied up here. 
and then we'll start and talk about um, notches and tailor's tacks and we're going to do something called thread tracing on this as well. So the first thing we're going to do is go to all of our pieces and where we've got, oh where's my slits on that there? So where we've got our little notches, which is those, those little dashes on the line of the pattern, we're going to just put a little snip with the nose of our scissors into the fabric at that point. Let me just move that pin out of the way just to show you why. Because then when we are working with these pattern pieces, you will see that little snip when you are working with it. Can you see the little V in there, look, the little snip. Now, when you're doing that, you literally do want to go through a couple of millimetres, no more, because you've only got a quarter of an inch seam allowance on here. So you just need enough just to be able to see it and just make sure it's gone through both pieces as well, because often sometimes you can get one piece and not the other. So there's one piece on the pocket bag, one, one notch, sorry. There's one notch on the pocket facing as well. On the clocks on the back, there's two here, which I suspect will be for put it poking a tail through, should we wish. And that's all there is on there. And then we've got one on the front of the pockets just here. And that's all we've got of those, okay? So that's notches for you. So any notches are treated the same way. If you've in a, got a notch and it's on a fabric, you don't normally have them where you are won't have to sew a seam, but if you did, you can always use a Frixion pen or you can always put a pin at a right angle to your edge and that will also mark it for you. So that's to one side. If you think that you're going to be either zigzagging or you're going to be um, overlocking to neaten your edges, and we haven't got quite got to that bit, but just to mention it whilst we're on this section here, is I would go and put a little tailor's tack in just to the side here. We're going to do those in a moment. To the side, just inside, probably half an inch inside or something on your seam, so that when you overlock this edge, because that's going to sort of hide where any notches are if they're on the cut edge, then if you've got that little tailor tack, you can just refer to it just so that you know where it is. But we'll, we'll do that if we need to when we get further down in the instructions. But for now, I don't think that we need to. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do now is we are going to mark our dots. So we've got a couple of dots on here and we're going to use a tailor's tack. So I've got my needle threaded with a contrast colour thread. I'm just using this mustard. And we use, tend to use a colour that isn't in the fabric so that it'll show up. And then what we do is we take our hand sewing needle and we take one stitch east to west or just across, straight across. And then we leave a tail of about an inch and then we change direction and go across the other way and take a stitch, in this case, north to south. Oops. Yeah, north to south, I'm going that way, aren't I? Not south north. And we leave a loop, and the loop has to be about an inch long as well. And then when we cut our thread off, we cut it off leaving about an inch, and then we cut through the loop. We've got one to do further down, and of course my thread isn't long enough, is it? Let's just pop some more thread in here. Oh no, I'll just show you on this one first, because so, they're both the same. So there's one there and there's one down the bottom. So then what you do is take out your pins when you're ready. You will then ease off your pattern and then hold on to your threads with your finger so that you can hold those down so they don't go away. And we can see that the position has been marked both there and there's a little yellow cross on the back of the garment of the fabric piece as well. And then what you do is you separate out those, pull those two pieces of fabric apart, like that, and you'll get a bridge of thread just in the middle there. And then what we do is we cut through that bridge of threads, making sure very carefully that we don't snip our fabric. And now when we separate those two pieces of fabric, we'll have a mark just here and one just there as well, in the, both identically in the right place. So it's a really good way of marking those points straight across. I'm just going to put my fabric, my pattern piece back on my fabric again because we're going to do this thread tracing. Maybe we do it singly. We'll do it singly once we get there because that might be better actually. Okay, the reason why I'm talking about this is because on Luna's collards, we've got a pleat down the front. See here, so it's supposed to look like a skirt, isn't it? So there's the pleat down the front. And so we need to know how to iron on that line and how to get that line right. So we're gonna do some thread tracing on the pattern pieces in a minute, and we'll, we'll put those in so that we've marked that line and that will help us get it absolutely straight. Because all of these tips and tricks are all about how to get the garment looking as best as you can do, really. So let's take a fairly long piece of thread. 
and just thread our needle just quickly if I can. Normally it doesn't work for me when I'm on, on camera. And let's put the ends together. I haven't put a knot in the end though. First thing I'm going to do is just take out my pins and decide which is going to be the front and back of my collots. I think the fabric's both the same on these. So let's just put that to one side. And let's separate these out and then make unmirrored copies. So we want a left and a right so that our pocket bags are on the outside here and that we've got this piece straight down now and we've got the crotch curve here, look, going round. Okay. So I've decided then, because I the way I opened it up, so this is going to be my top side now. So I'm just going to put a pin in on my top side and that will remind me that that's the top side of both of my pieces of fabric. So I would suggest that you do the same, especially if you've got fabric where you can kind of tell the difference, but, but you're not sure, but not enough to be, be sure. Choose one side all the time and have that as your main side. The next thing I'm going to do then is pop my pattern piece back on each piece in turn and pin it top and bottom and just either side of where the just these um just to hold it still really i don't know it's not just haven't tell you that's right okay and then down this line here we're going to then it's down the both lines i think isn't it why have we got two lines oh we've got two folded lines one forward and one back okay so we're going to take the first line where the dot is on and we're going to just take some loose running big running stitches just down our pattern piece my ends of my thread aren't together and i want them to be Okay, so just take a stitch, leave a tail, and then we're just going to do loose stitches going along here. And I'm following that line, that dotted line, all the way down. And we're transferring that dotted line onto the pattern piece so we know where it is. It's got tangled up on pins, just be careful yours doesn't as well. And you're just kind of leaving these with a little bit of a loop on them. They're quite big, but it's, it's just a reference. It's just like, I suppose, if you were drawing a, gosh, drawing a line across and you wanted just to reference it, then you would do this. But we're not going to draw it in pen or in Frixion pen because we're right down the centre of that garment, the pattern piece, and it might just mark our fabric and we don't want it to do that. So you're just trying to avoid your sellotape as well because it will gum up your needle. Okay. So there's one marked. Take that off. And then we're going to do the same on the other um, dotted line as well. And then when we finish that, we're going to just go and just snip through each of those loops that we, you know, the bridges of threads that we did. We don't make sure that we cut through it and don't pull it out. Because if I just ease this off now, when we ease that off and take the fabric off, you'll see that those, pat those threads will stay in the fabric and that will light you a bit like landing runway lights it'll direct you for how to make in that crease and making it nice and and um, sharp that's what we do the crease through it nice and sharp so let's do the other side now so let's just take a beaver tail thread tracing this is it's really useful especially if you've got markings for pin tucks and things like that that you want to mark onto your fabric or other, or other pattern placements or just if you want to outline something then it's really easy then to just use this to to mark your fabric because it's because you can just pull the threads out so it doesn't doesn't mark it permanently. 
and then we just go back through these little loops of threads and just snip them through. And then when we take our pattern piece off, which we're going to do next, we carefully just put our finger down just to hold those pieces in those threads in place to make sure they don't get pulled out with the pattern piece there we go and there's our two lines of threads to show us exactly where we're going to be pleating that that in together to make that that pleat when we have to come to do that later so now what we need to do is if we turn this pattern piece over the other one so we've got them both going the same way we can put the pattern piece on because we can't turn the pattern piece over otherwise we won't see the, the um, thread markings and I also think that you can only do them singly because if you try and do these together I think you're just going to like a tailor's tack I think you're just going to pull your threads out so I would do one in in turn but this time because we've got that's the right side of our fabric you'll just have a line like that on your fabric those two lines you won't have the fluffy bits which is why it's important to mark which is your right and wrong side otherwise you'll you'll get your pieces mixed up okay let me get on and do this side first and then that's it with notches and tailors tacks next we're on to reading the instructions and we'll get sewing so the first thing i recommend you do is get hold of your book and just read through all of your instructions from start to finish in order that you've just got a bit of an idea of the run through of things in order to see if it can make sense to you and um, obviously you can follow along with me if you want to instead but because i i've done that but that's one thing if you're working on your own i would strongly recommend so the first thing we're going to do is take our front of our clots and let's take our pattern piece off and then you want to just gently i've got still got some tailor's tacks here that i've although that thread tracing that's not come off yet so let's just remove that piece and then we want to, looking at our pins, make sure that we've got our right sides facing up towards us. So I've got a pin in each of mine and that reminds me which way round my right side of my fabric is. And the first thing that we're going to do first is, first thing first, is take the pocket facing, which is this one with the curved edge here. Make sure you've got your notch in there. And we can remove that, pattern, that pin and our pattern piece. And as we remembered, when we open these up together, we've got the right sides together when we cut out. And so we're going to pop these onto our pattern pieces the same way. So I've got right side to right side on my one side. And then this one I'll flip over and that will give me the other right side to right side on there. And what we're going to do is we are going to locate our notch, which is in the sides just there, and, and make sure that both pattern pieces are on top of each other. And we're going to use the red pin trick, which means that we stop stitching at that point. So there we go, we've got a red pin there to say we're going to stop stitching there. And then we are then going to put our pins in to match up the rest of our stitching line, which is going to be around this curved edge just here. Just holding those raw edges together. And you can work one at a time, I'll work one at a time, and then obviously you just know you've got to just reverse it for the other one, but it'll just cut down the time on the video for you. And then just go back to the other one, locate your notch, it'll be on the other side, put your red pin in there to, to tell you that you're going to be stopping. You see, I can't help myself, can I? And then just go up to the top and then put the rest of your pins in just for where you're going to be sewing round raw edges together. They should just like right on top of each other. And we need to pay particular attention to where that notch is. And that's why we've got our red pin there because we're actually gonna stop stitching at that point. So we're not gonna stitch all the way down here. We're going to stop at the red pin on both sides, which is just there. That was a red one, I was gonna change that color. Otherwise I should be confusing you. Okay, so let's get our sewing machine. And before we actually start sewing, I'm going to just check the tension on my sewing machine with one of my scraps. So I'll show you how I do that before we get going on doing these. Let's just pop those to one side once we get the sewing machine out. Okay, so I've got a piece of fabric here. I'm just gonna snip it in half because I want to have two smaller pieces. And I have my th machine set up with white thread. Now I do know in the book that she's used red for a contrast top stitch, but we can switch that if we want to at some stage, but I'll use this white for now. So we're just gonna, I've just got an ordinary presser foot on and I've got a size 70 Microtex needle on a 
Schmetz Microtex needle in. You could use an 80 as well if you wanted to. Either of those two would be fine. But you don't want to have a ballpoint um, needle in because that's for um, stretch fabric. So you just need an ordinary... Um, I use a Microtex because that's the one that I like. Or a standard needle. And then we're just going to take a few stitches um, through our fabric. And I've got this on a 2.2 stitch length, but 2.5 would also be fine. And then we've got this here. So we've just separated these out. Let's have a look at the stitches first. Stitches look like they've formed nicely. Nice and straight. There's no puckering and there's no stretching of those stitches. It's just lying nice and flat. And then if we just take the edges of the fabric apart from each other and finger press that with our fingernails and give it a little tug, just have a look and see how close, how much they lie together. So you want a nice flat seam that doesn't have any puckering, but also doesn't have any real gap between it unless you really pull on those stitches. Um, so that's, that's how I check my tension. If there is too much room between your stitches, then you would be tightening up. You'd be going up a higher number on your machine tension. If your stitch line was all tight and gathered, then you probably need to loosen off your tension, in which case I'd go to a slightly lower number. But I wouldn't move it more than half a number, so from five and a half to five in any one turn before then trying that seam again. And just restitch again, just to, if you need to, just to make sure that you're happy that your tension is, is right for your machine. Um, before you then start sewing because otherwise it's going to affect the, the way your whole garment looks all the way through. Okay so let's take our first piece of our trousers and we're going to be using I believe a quarter of an inch seam allowance yeah half a centimetre or quarter of an inch it says in the book so we need to know for that. So I usually set up my machine so that I can use the edge of my presser foot just here on the outside edge just here as being my quarter of an inch. So if I set my seam gauge here to quarter of an inch, which is there, which is about half a centimetre, and then I line the edge up with using my finger, I've got my foot nowhere near the pedal, all right, at this stage, and just line that up with the needle and I have a look where the little orange indicator is for the half an inch. And then I can see that I need to move my needle across a bit because it wasn't quite right and a bit more as well. Yep, so I'm happy now that the edge of my presser foot, when my needle is set at position 5.5, is, is enough for me to use that as my guide. It does help just, just keep you straight with your stitching. So now when I put my fabric in, I line up my raw edges of my fabric with the edge of my presser foot, and I know I've got my quarter of an inch seam is going to go there for me. Hold on to your threads, otherwise you'll get a nest at the back of your work. And then we're going to take a couple of stitches forward, and then we're going to reverse a couple of stitches back. And then I want you to press so that you've got your needle in your work, if you've got that function. If not, you might have what's called a hand crank. You might have a, a dial on the side of your machine like this. Just use that to always put your needle down in your work when you stop. It's a feature on some of the newer machines that you can have this switched on so that it, you, you, your needle will always finish in your work and it just anchors it down for you. So getting close to this pin, so let's just move that out of the way. And we're going to stitch down until we're just about a quarter of an inch past this, this put turning point just there. Let's go down. And we can test that because we can leave our needle in our work, we can lift our presser foot up, and then we can turn around. And if the edge of your presser foot is on the raw edges, then you know you're at your quarter of an inch again. So let's take a few stitches around here now your pins out as you need to and then we're going to do something called pivoting again so we pivoted at that point we left our needle in the work we can lift up our presser foot and we can turn our work now without losing our place and we're just going to now gradually go around this curve in this fabric just doing a few stitches at a time just taking it nice and steady one more perhaps and then we can straighten out to then come down because that's going to do the little fold over flap on the top of the um, top of the cloth. Take note of where your red pin is. Don't take it out. I'm going to sew up until we get really close to it. So I think I'm about three stitches away from it. So I'm going to take my pin out. I don't want to sew over it. And I'm just going to do three stitch. One, two, three. And then I'm going to reverse. Just to secure that. Needle out of my work. And now I can take those that piece of stitching out. 
and I can cut off my threads. And then we can see here, we've got down to here, and then we're going around the pocket edge there, and then down this side here. And then where we've got the knot, which is just there, then I've stopped stitching. Okay, so let's have a look at what we need to do next. I believe we'll need to clip this curve. So you can either do little crosses, little triangles out of your work like this, where you're going up to but not through the stitch line. As you can see, I'm going up to it but not through it, and just a thread, thread or two away. Or if you've got pinking shears, you can um, sew around. First of all though, just take a little snip up to but not through your stitches, just on that turning point just there. And then you can then use your pinking shears, not too close. Just take the bulk out of that edge just there. Okay, because then the next thing we're going to do is turn this round. We want that to be sitting nice and flat and that little curve to be there. So at first you're going to think it's not right because it's not going to sit right, but it will do. And then we normally fold our seam allowance back out here at that point there, where the notch is, so that can go down, okay? So the next thing we're going to do is take that to the iron, and we're going to just press that, so that's flat. Because when we, when we finish these, that's going to fold forward like that to give us the little, little fold over bit. Okay, let's move those bits out of the way. Get the iron board. What I'll do, just push it through that way, because I do like to press mine flat first. It does seem to set the stitches. So just press it front and back, just gently first. I did turn it down, didn't I? Let me turn it back up again. The little irons heat up pretty quickly. And then what we can do is we can just press, open up that seam allowance at the top of the pocket. And just press it flat, that'll help it for turning round. And then we're going to put our fingers inside that seam there and just turn that round and just make sure that's nice and smooth and it's turned out as neatly as we can get it. And if you've got a turning tool, I haven't got that, but you can use the edge, a curved edge and you can just neaten that off and just give it a little bit of a, a press out and it should, should curve for you. on the edge there. If you've got a pressing cloth as well, you can always use your pressing cloth. I like to use a silk organza pressing cloth, which is like this. So it's very, very clear, um, but it's very opaque. Um, not opaque, very translucent. And you can then use that to go over. And that, what that will do is just protect your fabric from over, overheating it, really, and scorching it, especially if you're using any wool fabrics, and that's a really good um, tip to use. So that's the first of the little pockets over and done with. And now we're going to go and do the other side. So I'm just going to stitch the other side. But this time I will start at the notch and go f and reverse, and then I'll go forward and go round and then finish up here and reverse up here. So go ahead and do that. So we've got both sides together and then we'll go on to the next step. When you're just pressing yours at the end, so you've got the, the waist edges here and then you've got round the curve here and you go down to where the notch was that we started and stopped at. If yours is puckering up a little bit like mine is there, just go back in. It just means that the notch hasn't gone quite far enough and we need to go right up to the stitches on that line, not through them, but right up to them. And then, so it's quite a big little snip there. Quite a big little snip, that's a contradiction in terms, isn't it? And then when you fold that out, that will actually sit out nicely, just nice and flat. So just make sure you've done that on both sides. I haven't done that properly on this side either, because that will make a difference when we are starting to join these together. And it won't compromise the stitching, so don't worry, it's just so that it can turn out, because you need that seam allowance to be flat to be out so that you can stitch the next part together. So now we're going to use this thread tracing that we did earlier. We're going to take our pins out now because we know which is the right side of our work, so that's good. I'm going to work on the one first that's got the solid lines because that'll be easier for you to see. 
And what we're doing is we're going to fold these pleats into this crotch line here. So the first thing I'm going to suggest you do, I know we just said, said so we're going to be is doing, is we're going to make a pleat along this edge here. And the way we do that is we're going to fold along that line of those stitches that we did and we're going to fold the crotch edge in first, so the curved edge in. I'm going to put some heat on that. Use your pressing cloth if you need to. If you want to use pressing cloth, you can always use a, an old, a, a tea towel or a pillowcase. They make great or just a little scrap piece of cotton fabric. You want it to be nice and thin if possible. So I've just folded that in. Can you see? So the curved edge is here and I've just folded it in. Now what I'm going to do is take the other line of stitches and I'm going to fold it now towards the crotch point. And if you make sure that those stitches are right on the edge, you'll have your pleat absolutely perfect. Just make sure it matches up properly at the top of the um, waistband. Press it from that side and we'll turn it over. And then we'll press it from this side as well. Just move your pocket out of the way. While, oh, I suppose it stays flat anyway, doesn't it? So it's fine. Let's have it in place. So we've done that on one. So that's what you'll end up with. So if we fold out this, this crotch, you can see we've got one pleat going to the inside and one pleat coming to the outside. And when that's over, you can see how that's going to form that lovely pleat on the front of the trousers. So let's do that again. So we need to make sure we've got two mirrored copies. So pocket that we've just sewn is just here on the outsides. There's our crotch curve. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to fold it on that line for the crotch curve and I'm going to fold it towards the pocket on the with the right side of the put the um, trousers up. So right side of the trousers up and you're going to fold that crotch curve in towards the pocket and then open it out. And you're kind of keeping it sort of folded on the inside there and then we're going to locate the other row of stitching. And we're going to now just press along that once that is, and that goes towards the crotch curve. If you want to put any prolonged time on your fabric, then a um, press cloth is, is ideal. And use a bit of steam because that will just help set everything. Give it a blow just to cool it down. So I've put, curved in my bit of my pocket there. Let me just flatten that back out again. That needs to stay flat. I didn't put any steam on this one, so let me just go back into this one and just put a little bit of steam on this one. So you can see that those that thread tracing has meant that we are absolutely 100% sure that that is curved, that that crease there is absolutely on the straight line, and so is that one there. You can just use the notches at the edges as... Um, Sarah Peel has said in the book, but I do think taking the extra time just to make that, that thread tracing does make a difference. And then when we lay them down, both pieces down onto our work surface, that way, crotch seams together and pocket bags to the outside, we can see that we've got those two pleats either side here. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do now is we're gonna open those pleats out and putting right sides together, we're going to match that crotch curve. So let's match up the waistband edge first and let's go down to the bottom and let's match up the inside the crotch point at the bottom of that curve and then we can then just match up a couple of pins just along the edge here and we're going to sew from the waistband all the way down using a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way through the edge, just all the way down there. And if you have got an overlocker, you can sew that on the overlocker if you wanted to, um, or if you've got a zigzag stitch on your machine, then you can use a zigzag stitch to neaten that after we've done it. But just for now, let's just, just sew it first and get it set in. I'm just get my machine ready. Just reverse a couple of stitches at the beginning just to anchor those threads and then put your needle in your work. Before you take your pin out, just help stop it. If you, if, you, if you have your needle in your work, even if you have to hand crank it when you stop, it means that when you pull your pins, you're not going to be doing that if your needle's up out of your work and give you a, a jagged line on your sewing. Another one out. 
and just make sure you're just sewing through the front and the back. You've got the pleats opened out so that you're not sewing through any of those. And then we've got this curve to start and navigate. So we can take a few stitches forward and then we can start and use our, our pivot function and leave your needle in the work, lift up your presser foot, change direction on your sewing for a few stitches and then a few more. We use pivoting so much in um, sewing, such a useful skill to have. And just take your time with your curves. It's much, it's much easier to take your time with your curves than it is to get, have to get your own picker out. And take those threads out at the end. Okay. And just reverse at the end as well. Take it out of our work. And let's just cut through our threads. And you'll be able to see that we've just sewn down this crotch curve. Just down there and then just around to here. Okay, so once we've done that crotch seam, look at your two lines of your thread tracing and you're going to go to the one closest to your pocket. You're going to measure down two inches and we're going to put a red pin in there to tell us that we need to stop. So just make sure that your two fronts are nice and flat together. Put another pin further up if you need to, just to hold it all together and in the right place. And your thread tracing line should be on top of each other. So we're going to start at the top here. There'll be a notch at the top as well if you copied those notches across. And we're going to just do a couple of stitches forward, a couple of stitches back. Take our pins out. Oh, let me just put my needle in my work. That's it. And then down to where that red pin is. And then we're going to then reverse. going to keep that that place intact for us and then take our threads out and starting threads off when we open this up we can see that the diamond shape at the back there by the pleat and if we open up the seam allowance that should be right on top of that seam that we've just sewn and that should seam then should keep that in in place then for down the front of these trousers. Gives you this kind of like double double effect, doesn't it? So that when, when they're flat together, it looks like it's just one continuous seam, but it'll open up. So the next thing that we're going to do now is we're going to flatten the pleat down onto the front using the memories you've already made and then base the folds of the pleat down for now. Right, okay, so we'll just do that with a big stitch because that will help us. So let's just get the iron and give us a good press because that will help it all lie flat for us. So first of all, let's lay it with the pleated side. So the front of our fabric is going down and then I've opened up my seam allowance, making sure that my pleats are on the edges as, as they were originally. And then we can just press this down with a little bit of steam. And we'll just hold that flat for us. And again, once we've done the back, we can then do the front just to hold that down. And then what I would do is change my stitch up to 3.5. I'm going to extend the stitch down to 5, which is the longest stitch I've got. And then I'm just going to baste. So just you're just going to tack down by doing a row of stitching just on the edge of that pleat. Don't go through the pocket. And I'm not reversing and stopping. We'll see it in a second and then go to the other side of the pleat because when you're trying to thread the elastic through if you haven't basted these down your safety pin will get stuck on the edges of this and it won't go through the waistband comfortably so there's my stitches on the right side just along there but on the back here they're right on the edge so that edge of that fold is now fastened down not not the seam allowance for the rise but the edge here what we should do really is neaten these edges as well. So let's just go ahead and put a zigzag stitch on each side of the seam we've just done. So for me, that's the stitch number eight. And let's take the stitch width down. I'm gonna use a two, I think, no, a 2.5, I think. And then take the width down to a one. And that should give us enough just to hold. And we're zigging onto the fabric and then just off. Bit more length. 
Just keep just, I'm just doing one side at a time. As I say, if you've overlocked this edge already, then you will have neatened as you've sewn. But sometimes these little characters can be a little bit fiddly for getting your overlocker out to use. Okay, that's one side done. And then we'll make what we can do then. If you don't drop your scissors, we'll just trim off some of the threads and just trim off some of the whiskers that are still sticking out after you've neatened that edge. Because of course on a sewing machine, it doesn't take off those edges, does it? Those little whiskers. Let's go ahead and do the other one. Your seam allowances are quite tiny, so just do your best. This fabric does fray, so I would recommend doing something to your seam allowances just to um, put my needle in my work. That way that's it. And I can just lift that seam edge out of the way a bit more. Loosen off any threads that they're there and you can just trim those off as well as your starting threads. It just helps control some of that fray. And certainly when these, if these are going to be um, played with by a child, then you'll need some sort of neatening on them. Otherwise they will, they will come, come undone a little bit. Okay, so I've left my lo loose threads here for my um, size five stitches because when we finish putting the elastic through, we'll just pull on those threads and that'll pull those stitches out for us but that'll hold them in place whilst we're there at the moment okay let me just have a look and see if there's any top stitching needed or anything no we don't need to do any top stitching at this moment in time so the next thing then we're going to get is our pocket bag our pocket bag and again remembering that our right side is on the inside so we had right sides together so let me open it up and just put a pin in just to remind me while i'm just working with them Pattern piece can go out of the way. So let's turn our. Now we're going to have the pleated side up. Are we? No, we're not. We're going to have the other side up. We're going to have the, the inside of the garment facing up. And then we're going to take the right side of the pocket bag and put it onto the right side here. It's just it's right over the top. And then we can then, once we've got it in place, we can use that pin that we were just marking the right way just to hold that together for us. So we've got the right, sorry, the wrong side of the trousers mark facing upwards. I do feel like I'm getting my words wrong today, I don't know why. And then you just take it and flip it over so you match the curved edges together onto those pocket bags. Make sure they're level at the waist. They're all edges together. And pin in. You just put in as many pins as you're comfortable using. And then at the bottom down here. So the bottom of your pockets you'll notice are loose and that is correct. That is how they're supposed to be. Okay. And now we're just going to go down here, a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way down here and all the way around the bottom, reverse at the start and reverse at the bottom. And then we're going to go ahead and neaten that seam as well, either with an overlocker or with a zigzag stitch. So let's get back on to our settings. And it's a good idea if you can get used to how you change your machine settings over, it is good practice for you to get used to doing that because then you just do it without thinking once you get to a, a certain familiarity with it. There's a needle in the work because we're going to be pivoted around this corner again. So a couple of stitches at a time. And we'll start to change direction. There's one done. Sewn all the way down here and all the way around to the edge there. 
We don't need to clip that curve because we're not turning it round. It's just going to go back onto the inside. And this is what's going to give us the back of the trouser so that we can turn the, the pocket edge down. So let's do the other one. And then we'll switch over to zigzag and we will zigzag those edges. Just reverse at the beginning and the end. In the work. Just stop to take your pins out, otherwise it can pull on your fabric. looking like at the moment and if we fold those pocket edges back down you can see how at the top it's extended the waistband slightly and then the edge of the pocket should be give us the quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way down for the outside edges of those hopefully you can see how those are looking so let's just change to a zigzag stitch a 2.5 I think and I think I was at a 1.5 length and let's just zigzag down these edges just to move to them off. So as I'm doing it now, I can see that I need to be actually in my fabric before I can pivot. So when you're on a zigzag, you can still pivot. You just need to be in your fabric. rather than being into fresh air. And I, I don't reverse at the end of my zigzagging because I think it's always going to be sewed into another into an extra seam anyway. So just take your whiskers off at the edge just to neaten that up. Just make sure you don't go through any stitches. And let's do this side as well, just to zigzag that. There we go, nice and neat. Okay. So the next thing that we're then going to do is, so what we're going to be doing next is this little bit here, this little bit of top stitching. So if you want to change your thread colour, then you can do. I think I'm going to keep mine with white though. I'm quite happy with white. Um, and we're just going to, from this wrong side here, if you move your crotch out of the way, I'm going to put some pins in from the wrong side. So can you see how that pattern piece fits nice and flat? fabric piece really isn't it and then it kind of lines up with the edge of the pleat on the front we can pin both at the same time while we're here because then what we're going to do is we're going to use the existing line that we've already sewn on to sew the pocket bag together and we're actually going to be sewing through all of the layers together to give us the top stitching on the top here so it's really important that we use that needle down function in order to keep that nice and neat. And if you want to change to a contrast thread, so Sarah's used red in the book, then this is where you would do that. And in actual fact, on the picture, you can see there's a bit of a jog in the, in the stitching as well there. So this is what we're trying to do. So let's take it off the zigzag stitch. And then I'm just gonna sew, so let's just revert on. Oh, I'm just gonna increase my stitch length as well, up to a three, because I like a stitch length of three for top stitching. So I'm just going to reverse, just to anchor that in. Needling our work, really important. And this pivoting down the bottom here is going to be really important too because we want to have that lovely neat edge. So take your time. Line your stitch line right in the centre of your presser foot. So your stitch line is like a, a, your runway that you're following. We're nearly ready to start turning. One more, I think. Okay, and then we're going to start and turning just nice and gently. Okay, that stitch out, that line out. And you're still following your curved line that you did before. Just a bit thin as you turn into a corner. 
and straighten up and off the edge. Now I'll just reverse just at the edge there just to hold that. So from your pocket bag side, it's going to look as if you've stitched that seam twice. You're going to have what looks like two sets of stitches across because we stitched through once to hold the, to put the two parts of the pocket bag together. But with this next row of stitching that we've just done, you will only see that row of stitching on the front of your pocket, not on the back, okay? Because you've only got that one going through. So let's carry on now with the next one get that one done so you've got to work from the wrong side you can't do this from the right side because it'll be in the wrong your stitching will be will be wrong and then there we go we've got two you might not be able to see this on here whoops that's our threads for our tacking stitches we've got a row of stitching down here and round and then one down here and round as well just there so that's all lovely and neat. And that gives that top stitching effect that you've got on the front of the trousers just here that's shown in this picture just here. So it's that stitching there that we've just completed. So now we've got, if we look at our sides of our pockets, we've still got it loose all the way here. And we're going to just join our threads just at that point where that notch was and just tack it down to the bottom of the edge there. So we can do that. It doesn't matter what size stitch you use for doing that bit it should be in this it'll be in the um seam allowance anyway or make sure that it is just do it just under a quarter of an inch on both sides just make sure your little side pieces are pulled out okay still got my tacking threads there for holding down my waistband Okay, so the other thing that I tend to do as well, oh, that, so they are doing it at this point as well, is that she does recommend as well that at this point here, we just tack that down as well. So can you see where the top of the pockets is loose? Then we're just going to do a bit of top stitching just on the edge there, right on the edge, just to hold that down. Just go down and then I'm just going to go back up, just reverse back up again. Sometimes it's difficult to actually get your stitches right on top of each other, so feel free to do a 180 degree turn at the top if you need to. Just make sure that your seam allowances are out so it's nice and straight and that you're right on the edge. making good progress with these. Lots of fraying edges. I not see anything with these, isn't it? Okay, so here we are. We've got the top bit secured there. So you've got your little flap bit. This is the little flap that's going to fold in like that. And that one's going to fold in like that on the edges. But we've got it secured at the top here. And now the pocket bags are secured down the bottom and they're sewn all the way round here because they've got that top stitching through onto the front as well, so that's done too. So the next thing that we're going to do now is take the back pieces. Where's my back piece on? Just here. And before we start to work with this, take the pattern piece off, but then I'm going to just quickly mark my right side again, just until we've got it placed, so that I know which side I'm using. And then it says to match up the side seams, make sure you've got your notches in place for your tail opening. And then what we're going to do is we are going to match up these side seams. So you're going to have to move your little pocket bag out the way, your little flap. And we're going to pin that on top. And you'll know you're right because you'll have your crotch seams in towards the centre. So let's do the top and then do the bottom. And then we can then pin down here. As I say, what you might want to do is just put a pin across the little flap because if we pin it out the way now, 
then actually it's not going to get. So just make sure you don't distort your side seam at all when you pin it in place. And just keep your pin out the way. So keep your pin out of the way of your side seam here. Okay. So there we go. So that's one side. Let's do one side first because I think it can get a bit confusing otherwise. We'll take it down off our top stitch down to our 2.2 .2 stitch length again. And I need a needle position of 5.5 to give me my quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I'm actually going from the bottom hem up to the top. It just feels right to work that way. So let's just do a reverse at the bottom. And we need our needle in our work. Now just be careful, just make sure everything's all nice and flat because we're now going to go through the bottom of where that pocket bag is. So just make sure that that pocket bag is folded nicely out of the way so we're not going to catch it in our seam. But you might get a bit of a ridge there where you've got to go over. I'm going to get to the top, I'm just going to reverse. Now that we've finished, we can take that pin out now that we've worked it through. And what you can see is that on this side seam, we've missed the bottom of the pocket there, look, but we've taken up all of the seam allowance that we needed, which is perfect. No frayed edges there at all. Everything's just absolutely perfect. Can you see? And then what Sarah's going to say is to press this to what seems towards the back, and then we're going to then top stitch down that side as well. So let's put the other side on first and we're going to do exactly the same thing. Because we've got our pin in, we know the right way round. So flick that over so that your crotch seam is towards the middle. And we're just going to pop our pins in here. We've got our pocket bag, our little pocket over, over um, revere. Fold it back. Sometimes the words just don't come to me. And other times I get in my flow and it's all great. So uh, do forgive me if it's a bit jerky today. I don't quite know why. Just one of those days, perhaps. Okay. So another pin just at the bottom of that pocket bag, because that'll just remind me where that is and just hold it in place and out of the way. So this time I can start from the top. So I usually, I usually sew with the bulk of my work over to the left-hand side. We've got quarter inch seam allowance again. So down the sides here. Take your pins out. Oops, that one doesn't want to come out. Needle in your work. And just steady again because we're coming up to where that pocket bag is. Just make sure that your, your machine doesn't try and, your press support doesn't try and push you off and, and lose your seam allowance because you need it to be exact at that point. going to go down and just zigzag these now because they, it is a raw edge and it will fray on us even though we're going to top stitch it down so let's do that again um, let's try that one okay reverse when I'm zigzagging but I do just knit back you can see the threads the threads just over the edge there the whiskers I do just tend to take those off just being careful not to cut through your stitches that you've just just put in it does just need to knit up for you okay let's just do the other side now we've got it on that stitch you're trying to zig in, in the work and, and then just zig just off the work. I've got my bobbin, it's got a bit of a death rattle going on it. I'll need to sort that out as well in a minute. Okay, let's just t trim off these whiskers here again. So 
over next, and we're going to do that in this top stitch. So again, if you're going to, um, oh no, we're going to press it first. Let's press it first because then that gives a better a better line to follow when we're actually top stitching it. So first of all, we're going to press it flat. Just press over your seams just to press those stitches in and just to kind of set those stitches on both edges. And then just fold out your side panel, your um, back panels, and then you can just then press again, just pulling that seam away from its, its the front just to make sure it lies nice and flat. And if you want to use your press cloth again, if you're going, if you're doing a quick press, you might be okay. But if you're going over again and want to use that, that steam and get it just lying really nice and flat, then press cloth is your friend. Just make sure there's no creases in there. We don't want to have any fabric um, out uh, folded back on itself. Just pressing as you go along will make a huge difference to your your work as well. Let me just take that little thread out. I've got one thread that's showing. And I also try and trim my threads as I go along because I think that it does does make it easier than when you're at the end. Okay, so that pin can come out now because we know which is the front. And then I'm going to go back onto a straight stitch from my zigzag. so that I can follow a line and I'm going to take my stitch length up to three because we're top stitching and we're going to top stitch this seam allowance now to the back of the trousers and I'm just going to just reverse at the top and the bottom Be careful when you're going over the edge of your pocket that your stay stitch, your top stitching stays straight. Because if you're not careful and you go too fast, then your machine will try and throw you off that line because of the bulk in the in the seam line. That's one done. And then let's do the other one here. I'm going to go from the hem up on this one. Pull the two pieces of fabric apart so that it's keep to your line. Reverse the top, just a couple of stitches just to hold it. And trim your threads. Okay. We're kind of getting there, aren't we? So this is what it should look like. So this is the back crotch curve. Eventually these will be joined together like that. And then eventually we'll then do the under seam together. So it's going to seem a bit strange at the moment, but we're kind of working on it in, in the flat at the moment. And that's our little pocket bags, just little pocket reveres just folded down. And eventually they'll have the button attached to them, won't they? So now we've done that bit now. Press the pocket flaps, oh, press the pocket flaps at an angle so we can press those. We'll do that in a minute. Oh, perhaps we'll do it now while it's in the flaps. So it'll be easier, won't it? So let's take our pin out. Let's make sure that we've got them nice and straight and we're going right for as maximum as we can do. And I am going to use my press cloth for this as well. Steam on, just to make that nice. And then on this side as well, just that one hadn't gone all the way down to the bottom. So I can just pull that one out a little bit more. To make, trying to make two equal flaps as best as you can. Press cloth over the top just to hold that, just to protect that fabric. Just steam, okay. So they will stay just as they are now, little bits of thread everywhere. That's pretty normal, isn't it, when we're sewing? Okay, so this is what we've got at the moment. That's all looking all nice. I have left my tacks in down the bottom here because I think when we come to give these trousers a final press, it's going to be helpful to know exactly where that line is. So that's why I have left them in for now um, and they line up beautifully. Let's get on to the next page. 
So the next thing we're going to do now is start to work with the hems on the bottom of the trousers and we're going to press those um, two centimetres to the back. Now we haven't neatened the edge on those yet, it didn't say anything about neatening the edge did it? It hasn't said anything about neatening all the way through I don't think on this. Okay so we're now going to work on the hems here and so you've got to decide whether you want to do a double turn or a single turn. So let's just turn these over here now and so at the bottom of this piece here I've got just a little jog in my thread look so I'm just going to neaten and straighten that off. You can do the same with yours as well just make sure that they're all nice and matching up nicely and they are now. And then we're going to use our seam gauge which is here. Get rid of all those threads they're getting in my way. And then we can turn up by one and a half centimetres. So if I set my seam gauge to one and a half centimetres, then I will be able to turn this up and make sure that's exactly right. The other thing with having this wool pressing mat is you can actually use your pins, and I do use my pins sometimes just to pin it in place at the right amount before I then press this. So I am going to press it now, but then I'm going to go back and neaten it. You can do it the other way around if you want to. Open out your pleat because the hem needs to go across the pleat. We'll repress that in a minute. Okay, so I've got my, my hem all pinned down onto my surface. Put my steam back on again. I'm just going to press along that edge now. This fabric does keep a, keep a crease nicely. Most cottons do as well. It tends to be the synthetic fibres that won't keep a crease. And if you wanted to, you could double fold that and then stitch it. Um, or just neaten it and then stitch it. It's going to be up to you, I think. Um, Sarah's just neatened the edge and then stitched it. So that's all she's done with hers. Let's take those pins out for now. It's cooled off. And just do exactly the same with the other side. So I have just taken my hems to the overlocker and I've just overlocked my hems. You can zigzag them if you wanted to or turn them twice. And whilst I was there, I also took the liberty of just overlocking the top waist edge as well, just so that was down. I am going to leave mine at the moment because Sarah does say to sew this down, but it's going to give you a, a rough edge on the, in, um, on the inseam. And because you're going to see that, then I'm going to stitch mine later it'll be a little bit fiddlier once it's in the round but I think there's enough room for us to be able to get round there later so I'm going to save mine feel free to go ahead and and stitch your hems down if you want to now but then the next thing we need to do is starting at the centre front is we need to fold the centre front over by a centimetre and a half I'm going to just work on the diagonal on this so I've got enough width for my board again so a centimetre and a half and put a pin in And then we're just going, this is for the elastic to go in for the waistband. So I'm just pinning this down. You can sometimes pin down into an ironing board as well. Um, if you've got a fabric cover on it, which is very helpful too. I've done that before now. So you don't have to have a wall pressing mat by any way, stretch of the imagination. So okay, one at the end there as well. So I've started from the centre out, because the centre is the most important part, really, if you think about it. That's what everybody's going to see, isn't it? The centre of the front of the trousers. OK, and now that's in place now, again, I can just use my iron to just press that. And it just gives it some memory so that when we come back to stitching it later, it's got the memory as to where it's got to fold. But you might need to give it a little bit of extra steam at that centre front because you've got all those layers for the tops of the pockets. Just make sure you put plenty of steam on that. And then, you just give it a little blow if it's actually cooled off before you take it off the ironing um, pressing mat or the ironing board it will hold its crease better if you're just used to just ironing and flicking straight up you'll find that you'll, you, your creases won't keep quite as well as if you 
do leave them. Look at those, they're looking nice on the front, aren't they? Okay, let's move this out of the way then for now. Have a look, see what we've got to do next. So now we're going to then lift up the back seam now where we've just folded it over. So we see that lovely creased edge just in there. And we're going to put these two back um, seams together now, raw edges, and pin those. And then we're going to sew those. Now let's remember our red pin trick again because we've got leave a gap for the tail and not a line has got a tail that we will want to accommodate. So there's one notch and let's do another one. Little reminders how to stop and start. And then we're going to put the two edges together that is going to be between the legs here. Okay. So we're going to start at the waist here where we've overlocked down, stop there, reverse, and then rejoin our threads here, reverse, and then all the way round. So let's just make sure what stitch we're on. So we're on stitch number one, but I'm on a top stitch. So let's take that back down to a construction stitch, which is our 2.2 again or 2.5 if you're using that. And my needle position needs to be at 5.5 to give me my quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then gently on the pedal and reverse. And then needle in the work before we take our pins out. And we're going pretty much straight down. So just remember when you're about three or four stitches away, take out your red pin. One, two, three, four, and then reverse just to reinforce that point. Now let's rejoin at the other red pin, making sure we've got our quarter minute seam allowance. Needle in my work before I take my pin out. And then reverse. Then we're going to pivot around this curve. reverse at the end. So we need to do some neatening up next. So there's our little hole in the middle of our seam for the tail to poke through. So reverse there, down to there, stopped, and then come back again, reverse, and then all the way down. And I'm just going to move the seam allowances to one side, and I'm going to zigzag all the way through, even through where the gap is for the tail. And I'll show you what I do with that at the end. Just to neaten that down. So let's go back onto our zigzag stitch, which is number eight. And take it down to a 2.5 and a two, that'll be fine. Okay. So if you've got your, where's my awl? A quick unpick. So just, just use your order of quick unpick just to hold your seam allowances out of the way while you're going around the corners. Sometimes it's a bit difficult to get fingers in, isn't it? Needle in the work, but make sure you're in your fabric when you start. I'm not going to break my thread, I'm just going to spin it round. And hold the seam I've just zigzagged out the way, I'm making sure not to catch any of the rest of the trousers in. I'm going to carry on and we'll stitch just so I'm in my work before I pivot. Make sure your seam allowance is flat and you've got the rest of your garment to one side. It's inevitable to get these little frame bits, these little whiskers. If we just trim them as we go along, it just whilst it's in the flat, it's just easier than when it's all sewn up into a circle. Okay. Put all of those bits out of the way. So the next thing that we're going to do now is open up this seam allowance and then fold our back back down again and we can fold that over. 
and now we're going to sew round but we're going to leave so I usually leave about the width of the seam allowance open so I'll start here and that's nicely pressed down so we've got a nice edge to work to and we're going to work to, to sort of just the other side of the top of the um, overlocking because if we have a look at the width have a look in my little haberdashery bag from my kit excuse the crinkling Oops, just need my safety pin. There's no buttons in there for the moment. And what we're going to do is this elastic, you've got to have enough, whatever, if you're not using a kit, you might not have elastic. You've got to have enough for your elastic to run freely around the centre there. So I think I'm going to go just below the line of my overlocking so that I've got plenty of room for that elastic to be threaded through. And that's always a good thing. The other thing that you can do just now is put my elastic out of the way for the moment is if you've got a free arm, you can take off this part of your sewing machine and you can th thread your trousers over the edge like that. Did you see that? So that's the waist edge. And it'll just fit over on mine. It might not on yours, but on mine it will do. If it doesn't, I would turn my... Um, well, you don't have a free arm because not all machines have them. I would turn the trousers the right way round so that I can expose the inside edge and then I would just do a few cent centimetres at a time and then just keep rolling my fabric forward and forward. So if I was stitching it without the um, free arm, you'd pop your fabric under like that, you'd sew a bit and then you'd roll it forward and keep rolling your fabric forward and exposing. You only need an inch at a time to be able to stitch, that's all you need. Being as I've got the free arm, we might as well use it. So let's line this up again. So put the trousers over the edge. I'm lining up the edge of my presser foot here, but I want to have my needle across to the left a little bit more. And as long as zigzag, let's take that off that first. And so long as we're in, into this section here, we'll be fine with the stitch width, so that's fine. And then I want it to be on a three stitch length because it's going to be the top stitching isn't it really you're going to see it from the outside so let's just reverse stitch there and this should pretty much fold itself around take your time where it gets chunky where the top of the pockets are and you might need to just help the machine go over the top of the threads and over the top of the fabric where it's really thick but just give the machine time to do that We're coming up to the back again and I want to leave a gap so just stopping the other side of that seam allowance should work get the threads off nice and close and then the other thing that I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to do a little line at the top as well because I think that's going to look nice so this is an extra step don't do this if you don't want to but I am going to just on the very uh, top edge of mine just do another row of stitches. So for this I need to have my needle set at number seven. Start right on that top edge. And I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. struggling just over the thickness and reverse at the end. I haven't left a gap on that one, I've just gone all the way round. And the reason for that is that it'll just keep that waistband nice and stiff stiff standing upwards rather than it tipping over at the back because they have a um, waistbands like this tend to have a bit of a tendency to um to roll and this one then should stay nice and upright so i'm just going to thread my elastic onto my um sorry uh, onto my safety pin but first of all i'm going to take a pin and i'm just going to pin my elastic to the back of my trousers because that will then anchor that down to make sure that, that the other end doesn't go in and try and follow me round. So then poke your safety pin, if you've not done this before this might be new to you, so just poke your 
safety pin through your elastic and then you can then push through on the elastic. Now, if you push on the end of the safety pin, you can gather up some fabric over the safety pin and kind of, and then you grip it with your finger and thumb here. So push the fabric through, then grip with this finger and thumb here, and then you can let go with this one and then you pull it. And as you pull, the elastic comes through. And this is where we'd got the um, pleats folded over and tacked down just to make that easy for us to get round. Hopefully we will be able to get round and that safety pin will hopefully go through okay. Oh, it's struggling a bit. So thick that fabric is just there. Just keep going. It's just found where the seam allowance is on the waistband. So just ease yourself back again. You can try and pull the the fabric apart so that you can get your safety pin through I think I have yeah. very thick to get that like safety pin through on the other side gosh there's a lot of layers of fabric there aren't there that's it it's going through it is just little and slowly at the moment when you're going on that front bit it does take a long time But this is why we've anchored the other end down so it doesn't just follow us because we, we only want to do this once we don't want to have to do this twice once we get through from where the pockets are we should be plain sailing again then so as i say you've just got to be really careful not to go to you've got to give yourself enough of a channel to get your safety pin and your elastic through and for those that to sit right so it's much easier once you get around to this other side and then we take the safety pin back out through the hole we came into. There it is, it pokes out. Just take some, if you think about it, if you, let me just hold on a second. Where you turn your waistband over, if you think about it, you've got your seam allowance and that creates a bit of a dead end for your elastic because your elastic has got to go through and your safety pin has got to go through both sides of that seam allowance. So if you just so if you think that's your waistband, and then we fold it, so that's with your seam allowance, and we've folded it over here into the edge of where that's that stitch line is, there's a dead end, and at the back there's a dead end, and you've got to get through between those two middle bits. It could be prudent to just tack those edges down like we did the pleats on the front, because that will help you that not on this bit here, but on the waistband at the centre front and the centre back because that will help you just get through. The next thing we want to do is make sure there's no twists in the elastic at all. And that looks all good to me. And then being careful that it's not going to flick back inside your garment, we want to put those two bits of elastic together. And we overlap one over the top of the other. And then I put a pin through lengthways. So if you can see, we've got our elastic going round. And we pull it out slightly like that because I think this is easier to sew by hand than it is to sew by machine. I don't, and I've got some contrast thread, but that doesn't matter, but you'll just be able to see. This doesn't have to be particularly pretty because it just has to hold. So once you've got a few stitches in, you can take your, your um, pin out and just hold them together, hold the edges together with your finger and thumb. And I'm just doing like an over stitch on the edges just to hold this together. So I've gone down one side, let's turn around, let's go back the other way. It's not very neat as you can see, but it doesn't need to be because nobody's ever gonna see this bit. If you need to, you can always try your elastic onto your Luna or your Otterline. I didn't try that, did I actually? Where's Otterline gone? Oh, she's up on my shelf. Let me just get her and we'll just try these on because before we seal this up, we can adjust this if we need to. So let me just put elastic safety pin through that and through the back here so that it doesn't go scooting off inside the waistband. Just let's just move those gathers around. Where are you at a line? I'm just gonna, I've got a tail on a clip. So let me just take a tail off for the moment. Doesn't matter that it's inside out. Let's just put your feet in there, otter line. 
and pull your new trousers up for you. Because some of these can be um, quite tight, can't they, on some of the characters? But no, that's going to be fine, I think. But nor do we want it too loose either. No, they're going to be fine, aren't they? So the piece of elastic I had in the kit was the perfect length for what we needed, for my otter line anyway. And she's got quite a nice tummy on her. So that should, that should work just fine. So I can take my safety pin out. And that will just, that elastic will then just, just pop inside there as we're just working with these. We'll poke it in if it doesn't. That's it. There we go. Sorry, Otterline, they're not quite ready yet. They'll be ready soon. Take those off. Okay. So now all we need to do is making sure that that elastic is tucked up right up inside. We are just going to sew over the edge of that elastic. In fact, if I turn them around the right way round, that'll be easier. So let's hold it open at that back flap. Line our needle up with our previous stitches. that waistband sealed take our threads off don't need those just put a bit of thread caught at the back there as well let's get that off while I'm here get the safety pin out of the way So this is how they're looking at the moment. Oh, look at that. That's a bit of an issue, isn't it? Can you see how the, but the um, pockets got caught in the, on this side, the pockets got caught in the waistband, but this side it hasn't. So I need to undo that. So let me show you just in case this happens to you. So I'm just gonna take out that stitch where it has, has um, folded it over. And I'm going to fold it back so that it's all lined nice and flat. I'm just going to take a couple more stitches out than we need to. Because then I'm going to go to the inside and locate that stitch just with my fingernail. I should be able to pull it and it should come loose and it has done. And I'm just going to go through the middle of it. Because then if we pull on it, we should pull the other stitch through and get a loop that we can then pull on with our quick unpick and that brings both of those ends to the inside and um, you'll have heard me say this many a time it's not about not going wrong because everybody goes wrong sometimes it's about knowing how to fix it so that it nobody else knows and this is one of the ways that I use to fix it so I've done a double knot on one end of that thread so those, 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 that's the front and the back thread. So you cut, oh, the stitches just end just there, look. And then let's go back in here and see if we can, where's my glasses? Probably if I do my glasses on at the moment. This white thread's difficult to see on the waistband. And then I'm just going to undo one or two stitches on the waistband here. Just to give it a little bit so that we can tie it off. Okay, that should be enough and then I go back onto the inside again now and find the end and just pull it back to be where we are and give it a little tug and you should get a loop little loop there look and if you pull on that that will pull that through from the other side and leaves that neat on the other side now when you've got long th short threads like this hold on to the short one and make the long one do the work so make a loop with it round the back of the other one. And then I use the, 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 the point of my quick unpick, just very gently, because I don't want to break the thread off, just to catch that thread from underneath and just take it under. And just tie it into a double knot. That just means that we don't have to reverse stitch at that point, because that can look messy on the front of these trousers. And we want it to look like we've not gone wrong. There you go, and again, okay. So the next thing that I do is get my hand sewing needle.
So now if I just show you here, we've got a bit of a loose bit there where the, where the elastic is, is, is loose on the, in, on the outside. On the inside, I'm sorry, on the outside, the stitches just start and stop, okay? But on the inside, we've got those ends. So now what I do with those ends is if they are not, if the th thread's not long enough to thread my needle first, I'll push my needle through some of the fabric making sure not to go through onto the inside, up uh, onto the right side. And then one at a time, if I have to, or both together, I will thread the needle with the loose end. Just takes a little bit of practice sometimes, but by threading, putting the needle through the fabric first, you shorten the length that that thread's got to go to. So that's how you can finish off shorter threads and if you've got a fluffy end on it just take the end off to give you a nicer squarer end and yes a little bit of saliva does help to wet that end and just keep the fibers together so you can thread your needle okay so that both those threads now the start and stop one are in the in the uh, of this side and then i just pull on them and that'll pull it through the thread so that through the fabric so that it won't then come unthreaded and then I go to the other side and yes you could be saying screaming at the screen why are you doing this Claire you could just cut it off and you can but there's more chance of the threads coming undone if you just cut them off and I don't want them to come undone so again I'm threading my needle first finding my threads And I'll do the same on the other side. So this is the other two now coming through. So that's one through. That one's really quite short. Let's see if we can manage to get that one through, which we should be able to. Come on. will go through because I know it will. A little bit more gentle persuasion I think it needs. Come on. Right there it does just pop through. So both threads now through the eye of the needle and then I could just pull on the on the needle and that will pull them through into the actual fabric so that I can then cut them off and they've just got a longer tail so that won't come undone. Right, so then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to rejoin your threads right at the point at which you stopped but you're not going to reverse stitch, you're just going to sew forward and then we're going, making sure that your pocket is folded back in the right way. So we'll start, we'll, we'll do it from the top, but we'll just stretch because there's elastic in it now. We just have to stretch and we just need to make sure the elastic is towards the top of our waistband as well. We're not going to get in the way because we don't want to stitch that elastic down. We're still on a three stitch for our top stitching, which is the same. Oops, go on the trousers. And this is what I would do with adult or children stitching as well if it wasn't quite as I wanted it. So locate the end of the stitch, which I think is there. And let me get my... Stitch into the middle there so I can see what I'm doing. And then holding on to the threads, I do just lower my needle down to make sure that it's in the right place. Excuse my hands being in the way. Flip it over to the side. Right, then hold on to your threads and just, just drop, stitch forward, don't stitch backwards. It's catching the top of that pocket down. And then I'm going to join it up to where the stitch is stopped, but I'm just going to stop. Okay, and then I'm going to take it off. I've left longer threads this time, so it's easier to work with. So we've joined that up exactly where it stopped and exactly where it started, because then we can go back to the front inside here, which is the invisible start stop. This is that I sometimes use. And obviously it comes sometimes deliberately and sometimes I have to do it just to save a situation. So that's pulled that both of those through. So again, just knot those off twice. Longer threads now, we've got longer threads we can work with. 
So you just have to remember to go to the middle of where you've gone wrong um, or where you've caught something down that you didn't want to in order that you give yourself the longest thread you can to work with. Because the frustrating thing is just working with the shorter threads when you've only got a short space to undo. Just pressing that needle down on that works because my hands are hot so it's slipping on the needle. Okay, and that's pulled that through on that side. Yeah, it's a lot of lot of trouble to go through to get a perfect finish. But do you know what? I think it's worth it. You may disagree, in which case just fast forward to the next bit. <laughs> but um, for me, I think it's always nice to know these little tips and tricks because they, you never know when they're going to come in handy. So then I've tied that off again. So I'll just thread this onto the needle and then cut the threads off. Oh, sorry, thread it through the fabric first. In, on the inside, so I'm just threading it through where I've overlocked on the on the seam edge. So that's enough just to hold it. So just through there. It ju it just gives it a longer tail. Just means it doesn't then flick out on you halfway through when you when you're wearing it or when somebody character's wearing it. And there we go, that's the invisible stop start. So now, because these pleats are sewn down, we can now just pull on our the tacking stitches we had holding the pleat inside. And that should just pull straight out. And get the inside thread out as well. And then on the other side as well. Because that was just tacking, holding the, those bits down so that when we threaded the elastic through, it was going to be in place. I'm not getting in the way. And there we go. They're all looking good so far. Okay, so the next thing now is to turn these round to the I'll take that pin out now. Holding the pocket down. Turn these round now to the other side. I'm going to open up my side seam. Side seam, open up my um hem edge make sure that matches pin in there i'm then going to go to the crotch seam we've uh, over we've zigzagged both of those stitch seam edges now so we can just oh i'll tell you what no 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 before we do that let's just sort out this other bit i nearly forgot because what i like to do is i like to put a couple of stitches down either side of the tail opening just to hold it so we put this back on my machine down to 2.2 again just for this bit I think because it's such a small edge isn't it so put your track the collots back into your machine make sure you've got nothing at the back and I'll show you what I do so just a couple of stitches down to the bottom of where it's split needle in the work because we're going to pivot and change direction and about two or three stitches across the edge a bottom at the edge and then pivot again and then come up the other side and then back over the top edge again and I'll just reverse there Just a little thing but it does just make a difference it stops the seam allowance from poking out whenever you're trying to get the tail through the hole so there's the hole so I just started here went down this side here of the hole across the bottom and then back up the other side it just means when you're trying to put your tail on or whatever it'll just hold that open for you Right, back to where we were. And that is just doing these bits here. We're on the homeward stretch now. We've done quite a nice little make, aren't they? With quite a lot of detail in them. And you learn quite a lot of um, along the way. If you're enjoying the video and you're sewing along with me, I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my channel. Um, and also that way you do find out what else I've got when I post it because I've got a lot more lunar lapin videos to come and also if you hit this the notification bell then you'll actually get notified when I do upload any new videos as well which is useful too so 
Thank you very much for that public service announcement. Okay, so back onto the trousers. So I've pinned together my hem, the crotch seam, and the other hem. And now we're going, to, this is the seam that goes between the legs. Pin out. So right up to the top, and then we're going to pivot at the top of this crotch seam. Just be careful of your pin. Needle in the work because we're going slowly. That's it. Pin out. Make sure you've got no fabric caught up underneath that you don't want to be sewn into your seam. Raw edges together. Obviously, you've used as many pins as you wanted to, and then down the other side. Just trim our threads at the start and at the bottom, and we're going to need to zigzag this zigzag this seam as well. This seam allowance, so let's put it back onto our zigzag stitch or take it over to your overlocker if you might have overlocked this seam anyway. And then let's just take this down the sides. and just spin around the curve. Then we can just, without breaking the thread, we can just switch over to coming down the other side. off take our whiskers off as well you know the drill by now Okay, so we've joined up. So we, this is the first time we've actually got our collots all in one, all in one place now, all sewn together. And the thing that we need to do now is we need to turn over our hems, making sure that our seam allowance at the edge there is open. Okay, so my apologies, my camera switched off um, and I didn't realise it had done. So what I did was I sewed the inseam here and then I went and I zigzagged along the inseam and then just trimmed off the whiskers. Some, some more have arrived since we've worked with it, but we can just trim those off. So zigzag either side of your seam allowance for your inseam. So that's the seam that goes between the legs. And then the next thing that you need to do then is open up your seam allowance and fold over your hems on the bottom of each leg. And then you can then stitch that together. And to do that, I had my trousers round the right way. This way, so that they were the right way round. And then if I just show you with my sewing machine. So apologies, I've filmed it beautifully. <laughs> And then on a straight stitch, all you do is, I start at the inseam on these as well, whenever I'm doing between the legs. Um, I start there and reverse stitch, just pop it under your presser foot like that, and just reverse stitch. And then what you do is you just pull forward and do like an inch, so you've got like an inch clear, 
and then you stitch that bit and then you pull and you you just roll in the trousers round and round and round in front of you so if i lift up the press ball, so you roll and roll and roll but you can just do an inch at a time as you're going through and then stitching and you'll be able to get them both done that way but what it does mean is that on the where your seam allowance was on the inside of your um seam if you'd sewn it your hem first you'll then have a bit of a seam allowance sticking out here all i do then is flatten it and then do another couple of stitches there but because we've i saved my seam out my hems for my legs until the end then i was able to tuck that seam allowance in and i think that gives you a much nicer finish and because the legs are quite wide on these then you don't have any problems with that at all um, so that's that's the bit that you missed now all i'm doing is taking out the um stitches for that we had in for the thread tracing for our pleats and i was just saying that if you get any threads that are caught and don't want to come come loose then just snip it it means that the, your needle's got or a stitch has gone through that thread somewhere so just snip it off close to the edge and then you should be able to get hold of the other edge and it should just pull straight out for you so don't go tugging on them too too strongly otherwise you will pull that thread out of the you, you will snap the thread that it, that's gone through it as well and then you might have to restitch a seam so now it's just about going back in again and just taking out all of the contrast thread that you used for your um tailor's tax and your little thread tracing just use a pin just to loosen those off and then as i say they should just pretty much just all, all pull out and make that nice and neat so I'm just going to go around doing that and then I will come back to you when it's time to sew on the buttons because that will be our final stage. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my trousers and I've taken off as many threads as I can see and they're all looking all lovely and neat. And that's thing we've got to do is just sew on these buttons. So I just thought I'd show you another little trick that I've got for sewing on buttons and you might think, well, you've sewn on buttons countless times. But if you take the two ends together, so I've got a long piece of thread here, I'm going to sew mine on in pink, and thread those through your needle, your hand sewing needle, together, and then put both ends together with the looped end at the bottom, so that at the end you end up with your two ends that you threaded through and your looped ends, and then just put them together. Just make sure there's no kinks in any of the thread, and then I'll do my quilters knot where I put my threads over the needle, wrap it round twice, then hold on to the threads and then push my needle through all the way to the end and you get a little perfect knot every single time. You can only do it if your thread's um, not too long though. And then let's go to our kit and we've got our two little buttons in here. And I kept them in the plastic bag because I just knew they were going to end up on the floor and I'd lose them. If you're not you lose got a kit, let me just see how big these are for you so we can tell you. They're one centimetre big. Okay, so what we're going to do with these is we are going to sew them on the edge of the pocket. So put your finger inside your pocket because you don't want to sew the button and, and through through the pocket all the way. You're just going to sew it through the inside. The first thing I'm going to do is hide my knot. So I'm going to go on the other side of the of the pocket and I'm just going to thread my needle through roughly in the area that I want that to come through at and that hides the knot on the inside there we won't see it then next thing I'm going to do is thread my needle in my, through my button in and out and then we can try and position this little button then wherever we want it to be so I think I'm going to have my holes facing up and down and it's just going to kind of fit into the curve of the button and then once curve of the side and now I'm going to go through but come out through the inside of my pocket so my needles coming through the inside of the pocket and then I can fasten that down and I'm going to go back in through the pocket being careful not to catch any other thread and come out through the hole and by having your needle threaded this way it means you're doing four threads through your button in every single stitch so then that's twice through so back through the button again going through the inside of the pocket 
and that's oh, I'm just trying to find the hole. So you can see the needles going through on the inside of the pocket there and then back through the other hole and through the inside of the pocket. So you, you put, your, your button is completely free of the fabric inside there. And then all I'm going to do now is just hold onto the, the button and push it to the, to the front so that I can get to the back there. We don't need a shank on it because it's not going to be opened and closed. It's purely for decoration. And then I'm going to take several stitches, well, three or four stitches. There's still several, isn't it? And then just close that together. Then when I finish that, I'm going to just thread my needle back in, into my pocket and I'm just going to be careful just to go a few little stitches down, but you're not going to see it. So I'm just going to go through, I'm going through the inside of that fabric, just through one layer so that we can just hide that thread and give us a bit of a tail. So give it a little bit of a tug so that's all nice and tight and then snip your thread off and then that should give you a nicely neatly finished button on the inside without a tail because the tail pops inside so that's one on let's go and do the other one and then we'll get these onto Otterline and see what she looks like in them so I'll just do my quarters not and then just trim the ends off so let's do that thing again so I'm going to lift the pocket flap up while we just come out in roughly the right area that hides the knot behind the flap let's thread our button on in and out and then I try and I've got my buttons going up and down, my butter holes on my button going up and down. So put that into position. Try and make sure that they're about even as well. I want them to be about the same. And then this time we're going to put our finger inside the, the pocket so that when that button is fixed down, we're going to go inside the pocket and not through the trousers at all. And then back in through the pocket again, in through the hole, if I can find it with my needle. Working a bit blind, aren't you, from this end? side? There it is. And I did three stitches, didn't I, on the last side? So let's do that. Let's get that even on this side as well. So having the, 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 fa the thread quadrupled like that just helps you to get the number of stitches it just it's just a time saver but just be careful you don't get any loops on the top if you do just choose each of your threads in turn and just give them each a little tug and then that one of them will will be connected to the loop and it should ju then just pull through so now that I've finished that let's push through on the pocket again so we can see the stitches that we've just done and then I'm just going to be doing some stitches in place through the back of the stitching that I've done on that button just do three and then I'm just going to take, go through one, take my needle in right where I came out and then just take a little bit of the, the, the fabric just through one layer so you can't see it anywhere else. Got any, uh, uh, not just joining there. And then if you put a little bit of pressure on the th thread when you snip it, it just pulls it back inside the, 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 the um, fabric behind the fabric for you. So there we go, there's our pockets. So now what needs to happen is, let me just get straightened up and we'll get Otterline dressed and see what she looks like. And so here we are, here's Otterline's trousers. You can see they're pulled out slightly just from the way that her hips are jointed, um, but otherwise they look adorable. So we've got little pink buttons, we've got our little working pockets, our hands can go nicely into there. Um, they're cropped style and they've got that lovely pleated front and the top stitching around the pockets as well. There's even the room in the back there for her tail to go. Hers is on a little press stud. Um, I won't be able to get it back on again now on camera. Oh, I have done. Um, so there, that just pops, the press stud just helps it just pop through as well. But the, yeah, they're looking lovely and that'd be great for her just for sitting down and just being able to wear. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Just want to say a really big thank you again to um, the sponsor of today's um, kit and um, video tutorial, and that is Pin and Tonic, who's one of my um, subscribers over on YouTube. So I want to say a very big thank you on behalf of both myself and anybody else who watches this video. Thank you very much for your kindness and your generosity and your support. So that's all there is for today then, folks. Just those um, these lovely collots. Um, I ha will have videos for the fishermen 
women's top and also the anorak and if you're watching these out of date order then they may already be live so just have a little look and uh, search on my channel and you should be able to find them because i've got the kits for those already and those will be coming next okay so for now from otterline and i i'm gonna say a really good um really good a really big good night thank you very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed if you have please subscribe but if not then that's fine i'll see you another time take care everybody have a great day bye